Been moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Mr. Chair, we want to call the roll. Yeah, I'll call the roll. I'm sorry. It's okay. Larry Porter. Been a while since I did this, okay? <laughs> yes. Jacqueline. Oh. Garden Land. Yes. Joe Zach. Yes. Mark McDonald. Yes. Bridget McCandless. Yes. Okay. I guess we'll go right into the reports unless somebody has something they want to share first. City Finance and Administration Department, September Utility Financials. You're up. Uh, good afternoon. Yeah, I, um, you have the reports that are you on? Turn your mic on. Good afternoon. Hello? We have a green light. Green. Oh, you passed it out. There you go. Good afternoon. No. Nope. Should be good now. <laughs> good afternoon. Yes. yes. What a wonderful afternoon. Uh, thank you, Brian Kidney, the Director of Finance Administration. I uh, we included the the uh, September financials for your review in your packet. I don't really have much to report on those. Uh, we did add a new column uh, to the far right. You might notice, if you want me to, to delay a little bit until everyone gets to that point, it's towards the end of the, uh, the packet. But the far right column does have a, a new percentage. Basically, it, it takes where we should be at, uh, if you would just take the annual budget divided by 12, um, you know, for instance, right now it's a quarter, so it's that means the year is 25% of the year um, has passed. And then that very last column just basically takes where we are right now compared to 25%. So, for instance, charges for services, we're at 28% of the year so far. Um, and that just means that far right column then says we're, you know, 3.3% 3, 3 higher than what an average budget is. The, the the one concern to look at when you're when you're doing it just like that we don't budget seasonally we budget for a year and divide it by 12. that might be something we look at in the future where we'll actually put a budget in for each individual month but right now we simply don't do that um, so at this point it's just more of a, a kind of a, a smell test does that make sense that we're 28 percent um through the you know 25 percent of the year but 28 percent of the year way through i think in all three utilities it, it it makes sense where we are based on on the on the seasons uh i don't again i don't really have anything to add other than hopefully um if you have a specific question about an operational expense or revenue then we obviously have the directors here that be able to answer those Thank you. Any questions from anybody? Yeah, could you go through um, how we stand for uh, the period ending September 3rd on each one of the utilities? So the stand? folks that are watching the um, video would be able to tell. Okay. Um, so I'll just take the the, uh, the the major ones. So for instance, operating revenue wise, the power and light is uh, approximately 29% ahead of budget. If that, is that what you're you're referring to? Whereas um, for the quarter ended, uh, the actual amount is 40.8 million dollars out of a 137 million dollar budget. Basically, right on track with what our revenue projection would be. So that kind of, okay. Uh, if you look at uh, our operating expenses, um, again we're 25% of the year through. Uh, actual expenses one hundred and two point nine million dollars um, off, which is we spent thirty six point five million dollars so far this year, which is about twenty six percent of the total budget. The investment income, interfund charges, and miscellaneous revenue um, are the expenses for those are running a little bit lower than what uh, was was budgeted, and then. 
Um, the big one, of course, is the in lieu of taxes. Those expenses um, match where we are on the revenue side. So we're slightly higher in revenue. And so th therefore our transfer out for our pilots then would also be up a little bit higher because it's based on a percentage of sales. So, so far through the year, um, the excess revenue over expenditures is about $700,000, which is um, right on track if you think about um, the size of budgets we're working with. And so there really wasn't um, a noticeable change in any kind of fund balances this, this year or this first quarter for IPL. On the water side, again, very similar. The revenues are right in track. Uh, we are in uh, the overall operational revenue for water is $32 million. We're at $9 million so far this year, which is just slightly ahead of, of budget. On the water side of things, uh, we spent $7 million out of a $40 million budget, which appears that we're quite a bit lower than expect, expected expenditures. But uh, I think I've mentioned this in the past, uh, a lot of those are the capital projects that have been rolled over from a prior year. And I would say that uh, I, I know Dan and Lisa and Jim will report on capital where they are with capital construction. And that will, would be a better description of where they are on those kind of things. And, but on the operational side, we're right on track with, with where we should be at on the operational side. Mm -hmm. And then, um, again, the in lieu of taxes, which is the big line item, um, which is budgeted for $3.2 million for the year. Uh, we've actually um, transferred 883000 which is right at 27% of the year. Again, uh, as with water, there's not a, a large variance in the fund balances for, for the first quarter. And then for sanitary sewer, again, the operating revenues were at 26% of the year through. That's $9 million for a $33 million budget. Uh, expenditures, very similar again to the water. We're on the operational side of things. We are right on track with the expenditures. Um, but then on the capital project side, uh, we're a little bit lower just because um, where we are in the actual, uh, where we are project to date on those capital items. And again, I think there's actually, an, um, I believe Lisa actually has an item future in this agenda to talk about capital projects. So, um, and again, the, the fund balance then also doesn't have a, a large variance from, from previous years or previous quarter. So in all three cases, we had a positive net income for this period? Well, um, we, we had uh, positive resources over expenditures, whether or not we Excuse call me. it. What? Yes. Okay. Um, you wouldn't necessarily call it net income, but we had more revenues than expenses coming. That's a good thing. At my house, that's a good thing. <laughs> right. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. I guess we'll go to the status of the dashboard report. Adam. All right, thank you all very much. Um, so in your packet, uh, the, or which is just handed out today, these are copies of the previous dashboard report that that the board used to receive, uh, it looks like back in 2018. Uh, and since that time, those, those have stopped being produced. Um, before we start producing these on a regular basis and include those as part of your packets going forward, wanted to bring these old samples to you all to make sure this is still the information you all want and need, or is there things that need to be added to this report or removed that aren't useful for you all? The goal here is to you know, give this board the information they need uh, to, help them, to help them make the best recommendations uh, and understand the utilities as possible. So uh, if there's something that needs to be modified here, let us know and we will do that and then going forward we will we will be producing these reports on an ongoing basis thank you uh, garland did you have some questions on this um yeah i, I i'm not prepared right now to 
to make comments uh, okay. other than um, I think it'd be well for us to look this over and maybe get back with you. Um, I, I have noticed that um, there's been um, people commenting on on media, social media about um, um, issues relating to their billings and and estimated billings and that type of thing. I think that would be related to the meter readers and so forth. And, and maybe we need to have some metrics relating to uh, estimated readings and that type of thing. Uh, that seems to be coming up more often now. And maybe we need to have some, some new metrics relating to uh, how meters are being read and, and not read and, and so forth. Very good. We'll we'll look into that. Absolutely. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Norris. Bridget. Sorry, you don't, can't see me behind you. Um, also, just a question about utility assistance. The number of people requiring utility assistance for the various uh, uh, departments that would be helpful to me. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Mr. Porter. It, and so if anybody has any feedback after this meeting, you take a look at it. Please send me an email and, and we'll we'll take a look and try to get, get that incorporated as best we can. Thank you, Adam. Okay. Well, water department. Municipal services. Are you now municipal services? Oh, that's right. They got to. You might explain that for you. Wants to know municipal services. I understand. Yeah. I got to. I got the lowdown on her. I know all about her. Merger. Um. Really, the only thing I have for you guys today is I'm due for my quarterly update on projects, on capital projects, like Brian mentioned. So um, I know what probably the most interesting one to everyone is biosolids. Um, that is our $5 million replacement of our incinerator that's been going on for years now. Um, that is finally, at long last, actively under construction. Um, contractors there every day. We're working through that. Materials have been delivered. Um, they're working away. Um, we do have, and I'll get to it at the end of my list, one project that is, needs to happen as a part of that. It's a polymer, actually, I'll just tell you now. One of our new capital projects for this year is our polymer system relocation that has to come about to um, facilitate the location of the new biosolid system. Um, but it was planned and budgeted and approved and everything, so that's just one of the new ones I wanted to make you aware of. Um, but as far as that one being under construction, since we have so many projects, I basically just was going to update you on things that have changed since we last updated. Um, our sanitary neighborhood improvements, that's uh, three different sites. One of them at 40th, 40th Terrace and Spring Street has been completed. Second site is under construction. That's at Blue Ridge Terrace and 24th Street. And then um, 24th East of Chrysler is the last one and uh, of those three and construction on all three will be completed this calendar year. Um, the blower replacement, we are looking to replace the blowers at the plant to save energy costs there. Um, our blowers are oversized for our needs and we're just waiting for sealed drawings back from the engineer. So we expect to have those actually this week or next and that'll be put out to bid. Our SCADA system replacement at the treatment plant is complete. Um, the Arrowhead Shopping Center project is scheduled to advertise next week on the 22nd with bid openings on the um, November 11th. Um, 16th and Scott is complete. That was a sanitary and storm combination project. So once we're in there and digging things up, go ahead and take care of you know problems that are affecting both disciplines. So that was a capacity improvement and I and I reduction program or project. Um, more in spring. Uh, currently under construction. That's our biggest in-house construction project to date, also a storm and sanitary project. Um, on the sanitary side, there are 290 linear feet of sanitary pipe to replace, and all but 30 feet of that is done as of this moment. And as soon as we complete sanitary, we'll move on to the storm part. 
And um, just as a refresher, that project removed sanitary lines from under houses, because um, you can imagine that would not go well when those fail. So those are have better access now and increased capacity. Um, Kentucky Hills, we were looking at installing a manifold system over there to help with some um, flooding issues in homes. Um, it'd be at our sanitary sewer pump station. We got the uh, geotech report back from an engineer and there's quite a bit of rock removal that would need to be done over there, which could be expensive quickly. So we're looking at actually um, a concrete storage tank underground instead of the manifold system that we were looking at. That's under evaluation, but more to come on that. Uh, Bison Park pump station, that's been submitted to FEMA for review for contribution. Um, that, again, is a um, slope stabilization issue in the Bison Park subdivision um, that was actually threatening the station. We had to reroute the force main there. That work is completed, and we've done acquisition on a couple of the other lots there that aren't really buildable because of the stabilization issues. So as soon as we have notes back from FEMA as to whether or not they're willing to contribute, um, we'll get that one bid out for repair as well. Our electrical substation rehab at the treatment plant is completed. So um, again, the reminder that was the, um, the switching over from one power source to another in a storm event was uh, the wiring wasn't what anybody would call really safe or well done and wasn't reliably switching. So that has been done. The plant's wired now to completely switch over um, from one feed to another when that has to happen. We were some functions were on one feed and some where we'd lose half the plant potentially. This way the plant can stay operating at all times. Um, those are old projects. These next ones you guys haven't heard about. They're new fiscal year projects. Um, we've selected a consultant for our sanitary sewer evaluation survey. That is um, a project that's going to go through and look in problem areas of town for um, connections that shouldn't exist, like roof drains and floor drains that are tied into the sanitary system, do a lot of smoke testing and things like that, um, focusing in the upper Rock Creek area and then 24 Highway and Rock Creek for starters. Um, Raymond, Harkless, and Mills surveys complete. It's another combination of storm and sanitary project, and we anticipate construction of that in the summer of 21. Pump station improvements, this is a general project to bring all of our uh, pump stations in the field up to acceptable standards for safety and just um, fencing, safety issues, piping rehab and things like that. Um, we plan to bid that first phase of that out in spring. Um, the polymer system relocation we've talked about and piping rehab, um, we expect to bid this winter focusing on basement piping at the treatment plant first. That's the list of all our completed project or our new projects, and then anything that's actively had work on it since my last update. Do you have any questions? Thank you, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Right there, Bridget. Hello, I haven't. Throw some, throw some at me. I I haven't gotten to meet you yet, Lisa. So thank you for your report. That's a lot to absorb. <laughs> um, can you just, since I'm brand new, do you mind telling me how you go about selecting your projects? Do you have them mapped out for a couple of years and then you pace yourself as they go? Or it's sort of first come, first serve? Or how does that work? Sure. So we have, um, I'll go through this piece by piece. So treatment plant is kind of its own train that we look at just equipment life cycles for um, all of our different units of process and equipment and what condition they're in, replace the worst first. Um, that plant was built in 78 and put in service in 79. So it has things that are failing as we go. Um, so we do have at least a projection out six years for projects. And if something, you know, degrades quicker than anticipated, then we could bump it in the list. But we, we do plan them out for several years in advance. On the collection side, so um, our sewer maintenance division, they, um, we operate from recommendations from the master plan, which is also being updated actually currently. Um, so trouble areas in town for capacity and things like that. Um, we use guidance from the master plan, calls and trouble areas that come in from complaints and things like that will also drive projects for that. Um, we also proactively look at lines that are um, either tile, clay tile and um, brittle and break easily 
we do things like the sanitary sewer evaluation survey to find um, infiltration and inflow sources in our system so we can go fix those. Um, let's see what else. Oh, we also have a trenchless technology program, which is basically lining of our system. We're up to about 11% of our system has been lined at this point. So that just extends the lines of the existing pipes. Um, once they degrade past a certain point, they wouldn't be candidates for lining. So those are pipes that aren't broken and have big offsets or anything like that yet. So we try and get them ahead of time so that we can extend that life. And when you say master plan, is that an independence master plan or a regional master plan? It's a sewer system master plan. And um, the last update was 10 years ago. So it's being updated right now. That's an ongoing project as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Okay. Now, Dan, as you found your sign, and I know who you are. In case I have to learn. You've had to make some history, Larry. <laughs> Did you bring that picture today? <laughs> I didn't. Okay. So there, I was just going to give the update on the comparison of the folks on the disconnect list that there were some questions about that I've been giving you every month to bring you up to date. I know this is in your packet, but that's really hard to read. So well, I'm going to go through it and help you to understand the parts that were left off. So. Just to give you a feel, we started this uh, spreadsheet back in March to see where we were with people on Disconnect when this first started. So that was 1.4 million. So uh, we update this monthly and our most current, so in September, the last time we had a full month of 20 cycles of billing, that number had risen to 1.7 million, which was down from the previous month. and. So we're heading in the right direction. We're, we're, we're not, they're going down. But um, there was a question about how many people are on that list. So if you take the 64,000 customers with the 30 days past due, it's basically 11% of our customers are in that area that would uh, be behind on their payments. And so we've entered this with the Community Service League I think everybody's aware of that. And we had the opportunity to use that money. And to give you an update on that, we processed 837 applications uh, to the tune of $580,000. To give you a feel for that, I had an update today and we're up to 1,600, so double that number of applications. And we're working well with the CSL staff I believe we're working very well. We don't have to let Adam make that decision. But uh, so, say they're, they're at 1,600, we're within like hours of giving them the information back in order for them to process it. And so, if you take that 1,600 and assume we had 800 now, that number would probably be in the neighborhood of 1. Point, let's see, 1.1 million approximately of how much of that 2.2 million would have been obligated to these customers. So once we give it back to them, they turn around and send us the amount of money from the CARES money back so we can put it on their accounts. So, so we have 1,600 total with an estimated 1.1 million of the 2.2. So we've been trying to get the delinquent customers to go to, go to the CSL site. You can do it out here as you walk out the door. Uh, if you come in. So we've been leaving, instead of shutting people off, we've been leaving blue cards. And on this blue card has a cslhousing.org, so you can go out and get that. If you if they come in, we, we encourage them to go ahead and sign up here if they don't have access to the internet. Uh, what, or whatever the case, we're just trying to drive them to the CSL in order to get that so they can apply for it. So we've been doing that. Uh, but what we're finding is some people they just don't do it. I mean, really, the only thing that they really understand is to disconnect. Uh, so what will happen on November 1st, uh, we'll be heading back to the disconnect route. We'll still make uh, arrangements with folks to, to address it. But first thing we're going to do is try to get them to do this because December 30th, we can't use the CSL. They can't use the money anymore. The CARES money will be gone. So we're trying to drive them, these folks that 
for whatever reason, are not getting the message. They're ignoring this blue card. They're ignoring everything about it and just not paying their bills because we're not shutting off. Um, anyway, that's where we're heading. So if they, there's hands. <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. Go ahead, uh, Mark. Uh, I got a couple of things. Uh, first of all, Dan, can you give us an idea of what we look like same period last year? So I know you probably don't have it in front of you, but no, I don't have that in front of me. But it's probably um, well. I, I'll have to look at that, Mark. Yeah, because I know we, we've always had delinquencies, but right. I, so, I mean that's not unusual. Here to give you a picture of what happens, we always have delinquencies. But when you start shutting them off, then they they pay the bill that I mean they have to pay, quite honestly. But as a whole, the utilities. I've been here for thirty five years. We write off a half of one percent. So we're going to get 99.95% of the money because if you move, you got to move completely out of the community. If you stay in the community, you're going to end up paying that bill back sooner or later. So uh, just to give you a feel, we'll, we'll collect the money. It's just to answer your question, I couldn't tell you exactly what we were a year ago today. Is it on there? Oh, I'm sorry. It's on the sheet, so maybe I could tell you if I'd look. So 1.7, so a year ago of August of 20, we were at 1.9. We're actually better than we were a year ago. Excuse me? We were, we were $200,000. Uh, 2019 was 869,000. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're not as good as we were. 1.7, I was looking at the, what we were a month ago. I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong, I was looking at the wrong table here. But what uh, Jim pointed out was, a year ago today, on September twentieth, this is last eight sixty nine. Yes, okay, we were thanks. we were eight six nine seven seven. So we were twice as there was twice as much a year ago. Okay. Uh, the other thing I had was to you, Adam. Uh, we had a motion at our last meeting. I think um, Bridget uh, actually initiated that uh, advised or recommended to the council that there not be shutoffs for. Do you, do you remember how you put it, Bridget? I, I think for um, schooling children minutes. who are having to do their schooling at home. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Yeah, I did. Okay. How do I turn it on? It's, uh, it might be on. Is it on? Sorry. I'm, so Dan and I don't have to switch microphones back and forth. We'll come up here. So, so what's the question? I'm sorry. Well, there was a motion uh, right. that Bridget made last meeting, and it was endorsed by the PUAB not to shut off utility. Because what rang my bell was when Dan said, we're going to start shutting folks off again. And then I know that the PUAB had made a recommendation not to shut it off for folks that had COVID-19 issues. Who had school-aged children who were going to school. At children that, I'm sorry, okay. you're right, that were uh, virtual students. Okay. Did that go to the council for them to make a? Not that I'm aware of yet. No. That, no, it has not that I'm aware of yet. I can't remember. I couldn't remember if that resolution was was approved or or whether it. No, it passed. Did it pass? Yeah. Okay, I can't. I couldn't recall correctly. I think at the time, since we weren't shutting off, it really wasn't an issue right. for us to even address it. Now the fact that if we're going back to the disconnects in November to try to drive folks to the. CSL the, to the the funding, then then that might be an issue. I mean, obviously it would be. An issue. I guess the, the point I'm trying to make is we made a motion or we mm -hmm. had a recommendation, yeah. and we need to find a way. We need to know whether or not those recommendations are actually making it to the city council so that they can either say yay or nay. But sure. yeah, absolutely. I was just wanting to make sure that she got that through. All right. We can work to get that on uh, Monday's agenda if it's not already yeah. part of the draft. Oh, do we do we have it written down what it, what the motion was, Kristen? Okay, good. Thank you. After the after the last PUB meeting, the council did discuss shutoffs, but there was no action taken on that. So they did discuss the shutoff issue, but there wasn't any action taken. What? Adam, wouldn't this fall under the emergency act that the city council has made uh, where closing stuff and opening stuff? Uh, I know that 
on the shutoffs, they go to great lengths not to shut off if there's somebody ill, sick, oxygen, uh, and other stuff. Dialysis, I know you do that, Dan and, and Jim. I mean, you check on all this stuff. This was, would simply be adding to it. That, but I, I, my question is, how, how are we going to judge it? How, how are you going to judge it to keep the, the kids are mm -hmm. on virtual learning? Yeah, yeah we, wouldn't, we wouldn't necessarily, I understand what you're saying. Uh, we wouldn't necessarily know that if a child was staying at grandma's house or right. anybody's house. Matter of fact, if their kids were staying at their house or uh, another house or whatever the case may be, we would have to, I don't know how you would do that, quite honestly. It's not in our uh, operations to ask those questions, to know that. I know. That's what I, and that's my concern. I don't know how you're going to do that. So our, our, our concern is, um, our concern is that we are running up against a December 30th deadline to utilize these funds that have been allocated to us. At this point in time, we are, uh, maybe we have $1 million worth of requests coming in and we have $2.3 million of funding available. As Dan alluded to, it, to put it as simply, is to help, to get these people help, which is our intention, we, we, we believe this is a necessary step to, for people to take advantage of this program. It's not intended for, to be punitive in any way. It's really to drive utilization of this program. And partnering with the school district seems the obvious um, answer to be able, because they're going to know what families are struggling to be able to get online. So it may be that they're your natural ally. That's a great suggestion. Well, in the, in the case of these accounts, this is Jim Nail, uh, IPL director, we work directly with customer service on generating these lists. These are accounts that have received a notice for four months in a row that they are delinquent. For the last two months, there's been an additional note on that card that says, you will be shut off. Please go to Community Service League and get this assistance. And for whatever reason, these, these accounts have ignored those warnings, they've ignored the cards, and they've, they've taken no action to get the assistance that's available. Our feeling is they will continue to sit there and not get assistance unless we push the issue. I, I agree with you, Jim. I, I, Mr. If you don't, if you don't, uh, some of them are just not going to, they're not going to do anything until you shut them off. Simple as that. Mr. Porter. That's, that's what the shutoff folks say that uh, well, they, they, like, where you been, you know, but, yeah, well, uh, I mean, uh, one of the things that we're, we are, we are sending CSL is trying to, up the try to get a hold of everybody. However, they're reaching out to everybody they possibly can. Now, what we're sending them now is everybody in the whole city is on a past due, so that they have an address and a phone number, so they can reach those folks. You know, in another okay. way. Um, it, and we, some, we put it on all. Point, at some point, the customer has to take some responsibility. I'm sorry, I, that, that's my opinion. So, Larry, you want to explain that you've been with the utilities for X number of years, and so that's why you feel <laughs> <laughs> you have a history with that. So. Well, yeah. Uh, Mark? Yeah, yeah I, I had one more thing. What part of this, or I, I don't even know if you, you know this answer. You know, we've had some enormous um, billing issues, and there was a period of people didn't pay their bill because they kept blaming their bills were so bad and all that good stuff. Is that still part of the issue that we're dealing with at this point? It would be misguided. It was misguided before because the bills have always been accurate. It's the same thing as it was, you know, two years ago. When you use power because it's hot out, your bill is going to be higher. Now, granted, these the information about uh, estimated reads and that type of thing, yes. if you get an estimated read, you may pay a, a lower bill for a month or two, but then you're, sooner or later you get the real read and it catches up with them. So it, and on social media, they say that, you know, the bills are exorbitant. Well, it's because you haven't paid the full amount the last three months or however many times it's been estimated. So the truth of the matter is it's all based, the, the rates have gone down actually, 
So the, the, the cost has gone down for customers. The only thing that's changed is their usage. So uh, the billing system, it bills correctly. I've calculated thousands my personally myself. No, no, no. I'm not so, challenging the billing, but I also know that people use that as a rationale for not paying. Right. Their it's bill. it's a perception that someone wants to keep. Let me ask you this: Do we have a, a means of determining how many of our bills were estimated that went out? Yeah, we we and just to give you an update, I'll, I could do it or Jim could do it. Uh, it's the meter and, and I think, Mr. Sure. North, if you take a note down. I think that would be a really good thing for the dashboard mm -hmm. to add uh, the number of uh, estimated you bills. Don't answer the because the you know I've heard on uh, social media how big of a deal the estimated bills are. Yeah, and I believe earlier Garland had asked that we add oh, that we oh, number of estimated. We have our our meter reading staff is set to support the number of, of reads that we do across the month, across the year. Um, unfortunately, with the COVID issues, we did have a meter reader who tested positive. Two coworkers who had been in close contact with that individual also um, had to quarantine. We had another individual that sprained their ankle, so they were on like so our meter reading staff took a hit here most recently. And so there have been some days where we did not have full staff to cover all the reads in the cycle. Uh, so we we do know how many are estimated each day and we can we can provide that information. How do you estimate? What's I'll, the I'll calculation for estimation? Okay, right. Because so, it always seems like the estimate is way high. Well, the truth of the matter is, well, let's, let's go with the truth. question first. So it would be based on, say, a year ago at the same time period, the same usage. It's usage, not dollars. So the same usage. The only people that complain about an estimated bill are those that paid a lower bill to start with and then had to make it up and pay a high bill. If it goes the other way, if you overestimate, guess what? They've already paid the money. All of a sudden, they get a low bill. Nobody calls. So 50% of the estimates would we never hear from. We're only going to hear from those 50% that are overcharged. Or so the estimation say. is based on their specific actual usage account. Every bit of its actual usage okay. of the meter. It's, not a general it's just number. a matter of when do you get the read and when the meter read when it's when it's brought forward to the exact amount that, that they've used. If we keep estimating and estimate and estimate, you could be estimating low or high. But again, you only get you only hear about the ones that get that high bill when they make it up. You, I've never had one call me up and say, well, wait a minute, why is my bill so low? Just one with you. Thank you. Dan, is that, is that blue thing, is that what you're putting on, on their door? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, is that on their door? Yes. Handle? So we would leave this, instead of sh disconnecting and shutting people off, we've been leaving what we call blue cards, obvious here. And then we slapped a sticker on there to encourage them. So it tells what they were there for, that you're subject to disconnection and all that good stuff. And instead of shutting them off, we leave the blue cards to try to drive them to make a phone call in, make arrangements, or go to the CSL and apply for assistance. So it does have the CSL address? Email. Yes, it, well it has, CSL doesn't want us to have them call. They want them to go to cslhousing.org. So if you go to that site or if you go out here, we have a kiosk where you can put in your account, I mean, your name and address, and and then it applies for it. And they've been processed with some every day since then. So they may not have an internet. Well, if they don't have an internet, you can go to the library, you can do it here. I mean, yeah. it's wherever you want to do it. I'm sure that- Just trying to understand why they're not following through. Well, uh, to me, it's, it's what, if, if you talk to the people that do disconnects, they will say that People that are used to being disconnected, that's the only thing they relate to. When the lights go out, then they handle the business. They'll go pay another bill. If, if nobody's shutting them off, they're not going to react is what they would say. No, Larry's been in this business a lot longer than I have. But, uh, but anyway, and that's what staff, what I'm hearing from uh, the Power and Light staff is they're just saying, if you want this to happen, this is the only thing they're gonna understand and you know, as compassionate as we can be, and we know the money's available, if they don't apply for it, it's going to disappear on December the 30th, and that's not going to be an option. 
if we wait till December 30th, we're concerned that it's too late. So the disconnects are going to be December 1, is that what we're saying? Well, no, no, November 1 will start disconnecting. No, November 1. Right. Okay. They've been getting cards. They've been, they, these cards are the last resort. I mean, they're already getting multiple mails. They're getting a phone call. All these things are happening. These are just layer after layer after notification, and they still choose to not. There's folks that just do not respond to it. And how many people, how many families is it? It's, uh, well, just because I say 10 or 11% of the people are late, that doesn't mean that they've gotten disconnect notices. You could say your, say your bill is 30 days past due, you'll get a, you'll pay a 5% premium on that amount, the penalty, but you won't be up for a disconnect for, you know, for another 30 days. So uh, just because you get, you could have people that have this that are only 30 days past due that would get a blue card just to notify them to give an opportunity. But uh, to answer, like 100, 121 past, 121 days past due is four hundred thousand dollars worth of. I don't know the numbers of customers. I didn't have it broke out that way, but uh, I had a report ran. It just said how much, how many dollars in each. You know, 121 days, 90 days, 60 days, just to kind of get a feel. So if you take that four hundred thousand divided by the the average bill is around two hundred forty four dollars. Well, I mean, if you if you if you stopped and looked at the amount of money that we're behind. We have enough CARES money to cover every one of them, yeah. but we can't use that money for that if it if they weren't affected by CARE because of a, it, it can't just because if I had a job the whole time and I just chose not to pay my bill because you weren't shutting off, that doesn't mean I should go over and apply for CARES money because I wasn't affected by the uh, the virus. Mm -hmm. I'm still working. I'm, I'm just choosing not to pay my bill. So it, we don't know the answer to that, Garland, as far as. I'm just trying to get a feel for how many people were actually, families were actually talking about. Oh, well, if you took everybody that was on there, it's on my sheet of paper here, if I just read it. 1,684 customers are behind, but that doesn't mean all of them would be available for the, the CARES money. But that. I mean, to the tune of, you know, we're talking $1.7 million. It could almost, I mean, there's enough CARES money to pay all that, but that's not, that's businesses, that's everything. Um, Dan, I have one quick thing. Uh, you know, I've been thinking about this estimation thing, and, and I understand your operation, and what do we have as an emergency backup plan for when you lose four people? That's, I don't know what percentage that is of your staff, I'm looking at Jim. Yeah, right, there's everybody has him. to answer this because we got. I guess I'm looking at Adam. <laughs> yeah. But it's really not a ratepayers problem that uh, you don't have people there available. I know over the city we have tons of people available, and that I would think that would be something we could negotiate with the union. That, and, and I know I'm not downplaying the the skill level of a, a meter reader. But I would think that's something that we could, quite frankly, uh, do away with that. Because we're paying folks to sit at home, right? Are we not? No. We're not? Um, so our con the IBW contract includes provisions about uh, temporary labor. Okay. okay. So uh, in this uh, case, we um, contact the union hall, and they actually provide us temporary folks that... Uh, that are that help us out. So they, we, we have temporary employees right now. Have you done that? They just yeah. Once as soon as we found out what was happening, yeah, we did that. Yes. Okay. My hearing's not that good. I'm yeah. <laughs> we also there's also contract provisions that require us to use um, if we do third party contractors, we have to use third party contractors that are subject to. I can't remember the the term that's used, but. Um, Kind of a prevailing wage type thing. So we, I, I we hope have that those we're doing everything we've exercised we can. them. We we have we have some temporary uh, folks that just started this week. Okay, so we, we shouldn't be dealing with an estimation problem in the future, right? Well, you're. I, you're I think you're always going to. Estimation. Well, if they're not able to get in to the the meter, or they can't. Something's obstructing them. I understand that, but it's BS if we're we're not getting the meters read. And then we're holding folks accountable for something that they shouldn't be held accountable for. We, we've always had uh, 
We've it's always had estimated reads. Again, if you can't get in the backyard right. or you or they park a car on top of your meter well, uh, whatever they want to do, there's lots of opportunities for folks to make sure that you don't read their meter. Uh, there's folks that will not let you in the house. Uh, I, I mean, we've, we've seen it through the years, everything that you can imagine. Or grow a hedge over them. Put a, go ahead. Well, that's we, we found yours, Mark. <laughs> we went back and dug it out. But uh, so, but we're always going to have that opportunity. Now we have been faced with some additional things that we haven't had in the past. But just the number of, say, the union contract, how many meters that they can read, uh, based on that, you have to have the number of bodies and able to, to it, able to read it. So if there's 20 cycles and you need 15 meter readers or 13 meter readers to read those. And you've got nine people there, then you're going to have to estimate. Say that's, say it's nine and twelve. So there's, I'm just making up a number. So with every day we have to estimate two or three cycles, or you know, billing books in that cycle. So what we're trying to do is to say next time, next month, when you roll around to that house, that we do not estimate that same book again. We have somebody else read that book and we estimate somebody else because we're going to run into it real quick here with water pollution control uses a winter core. Sorry, municipal services. Yeah, I'm old school here. Municipal services will uh, need those winter quarter reads in order to get the winter quarter average for the sewers. We need good reads at during that, that quarter. Otherwise, if you don't, then you have to estimate you don't want to do that. So we're doing everything possible to get that. I mean, and we were all walking around the same issue that the only way that you could avoid not having personnel issues is to be, be an AMI or some kind of a automatic reading device that allows you to get in houses and take out the play of people because you're always going to have that opportunity for estimated reads. Mr. Porter? Not to the extent that we're currently having them when you have four people not showing up for work. Mr. Porter? Yeah. Bridget, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Norris, could we ask for a comparison for other municipalities who uh, run their own utilities, how they're doing estimated reads? Do they have the same amount that we have? Are they staffed differently? How have they approached that? I know some of them have hybrid where they have AMI and meter readers. I think that would help us to be uh, using some benchmarks for ourselves about what we would expect of our own utility. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Adam, uh, I'm going to back up a little bit. Are we paying the CSL an administrative cost? I, I believe the agreement with CSL includes an administrative fee because they, they had, if I remember, they had to staff up a little bit to do this, and there is a, um, there's a benefit to. Is that taken out of the $2.5 million? Yes. Okay. Keep raising that number 2.2, 2.1, 2.3, 2.5. <laughs> well, whatever it is. Yeah, I know. I just dollar and a quarter. <laughs> so the, just, else? just just to close the the loop on on uh, Mr. McDonald's comments earlier, the question about the shutoffs for school for school age children. So Jim reminded everyone that it was discussed, but. Perhaps there. Let's. We will look and see if there is a mechanism. If it's not overly administratively burdensome, if there is a reasonable way to look at that, then we will. We will um, try to make that accommodation. But we'll. We'll need to see if there's administratively if we can do that and how that would work exactly. Okay. Adam, uh, I think you know that might be. And I talked to you and Jim the other day. That might fall under our IPL prioritization preliminary plan. That could fit in there at any place where you might think about that. Yes, sir. Okay. Jim, you're up. All right, sir. Jim Dell, Power and Light Director. Uh, first thing on the list, listing of all IPL non-operating expenditures. We'd like to clarify what, what expenses I mean, before we give you a 30 page printout of all our administrative expenses, because I don't think that's what you're asking for, what what expenses, what type of expenses are you wanting to see? If this was, is it Mr. Porter? Yes, Mark. Yeah, this is mine. Uh, this was something I made a request to, to Brian 
it's been, I think the last time, was it the last time we had a meeting here? Yeah, it was in the minutes. I know. Okay. Yeah, it was in the. And your your email real, said it's really all something that was coming from Brian's shop. I thought your 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 email said all expenses not directly related to production, distribution, and transmission. That's right. So, do you want a thirty-page line item listing of our administrative expenses, or are you looking for non-IPL expenses? What I'm looking for. Is I and you mentioned something about administrative. I mean, I understand there's administrative anything that's personnel related to IPL. I understand, but anything outside of that would be probably non-personnel expenditures, whether it be sponsorships, whether it be um, funding of particular groups, um, signage, marketing, um, all those type of things. Okay. It's not related to. Um, the people that do the accounting of uh, the administrative assistance, if common sense would tell you what we're looking for is what we are paying, what our average rate payer is paying up and beyond what they're paying for the usage of our electricity. All right. Does that make sense? I understand. And, and it's troubling, and I'm not looking at you, I'm looking at, at Brian over there, hiding behind Sarah. Um, it, it's been, I don't know how many months it's been since we were in here. And if we needed clarification, I'm at home every day. All you got to do is call me. And I'd be able, uh, happy to help out in any way. And, you know, now that we've, we've mentioned it and we brought it up for clarification, I'd like to expand it to the water and WPC also. Because we need to know what our ratepayers are paying in addition to the services that um, they originally intended to provide by um, our enterprise um, entities. Does that make sense? Yes. And we will we'll have an update for you next month. Okay. Uh, update on electric rate comparison, municipal owned utilities. Uh, I have this, this, our staff is working on that now. It's the, Depending on whose website you go to, you will find either a listing that includes Independence, Springfield, and Columbia, or you'll find a list of 30 or 40 municipal utilities in Missouri, Harrisonville, uh, Cameron, uh, Carrollton. Obviously, those are not utilities on the same scale as Independence, Springfield, and, and Columbia, so we're trying to sort that out to make sure that we give you a an apples to apples comparison of, and we're reaching out to Kansas as well so that we can get uh, utilities that are of a similar scope and, and service that we provide and give you a comparison well, based on that. Well, the, hopefully you're looking at him because he requests, <laughs> yeah, that, that, I request right. a lot of stuff, but, but he- Christine, would you make a note that Mr. McDowell showed up? <laughs> <laughs> So yes, Mr. McDowell, uh, we are we'll still work. <laughs> we are working on an answer to that comparison, uh, but we want to make sure we give you a a honest comparison that that is of like, um, you know, what the value is for the the value for the rates compared to, because uh, obviously it's going to be different if if somebody with eight thousand customers compared to somebody with fifty thousand fifty thousand accounts. Um, the last item update on the prioritization process. Uh, I think we actually we met with everybody but Joe this week uh, to start getting some input from you and to help answer questions. And the process that we've proposed is that we will continue to work through that over this month, next month, come up with a list of targeted priority uh, items for IPL to, to work on. And we will then present that to PUAB and then go from there to take that to council. Yeah, we discussed that. I think that's a good idea. Mr. I just, Chairman. I wondered if we needed to uh, call a special meeting. If you come up with it before the 19th, we could call a special meeting and get it approved. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I think now would be a good time since we've all of us have met. Why don't you go ahead and generate something quickly so we can all look at what everybody else said? That might might speed up the process and I, I would like a second meeting with you after I have a chance to look at that. Certainly. I'm, I'm sure everybody else would too. 
let's, let's get this thing and really tighten it down so we can present something that doesn't it looks professional back to the city council. Yes, sir. Our intention is not to wait until the wait until December and spring it on you. Uh, we want to partner with you and to produce this, and we will work. We'll work through the process alongside you. Since we've done this in just one week, it seems like we wasted a week. There's no reason to waste another two or three weeks. I think you should do something the next. This is Thursday. By by Wednesday of next week, I would like to have a report of what everybody has come up with. And then let's start the second set of meetings with everybody. Let's get this hammered out and get it hammered out quick. Well, uh, I think that's a, our plan, as far as I know. When I left the meeting, that's, our plan was to get it as quick as we could and, and get everybody together again to look at all of it. And that's why we would call a special meeting in early November, the 5th or the 12th, I think is. Right. The, the motion at the last the motion at the last POAB meeting was to have this done by the end of the year. And like I said, we don't we don't have any intention to just sit back and wait for the end of the year. We are going to work through this process with you. Yeah. Larry. In, in the discussion that, that we had today before this meeting, as I understand it, we're not just having a list of, of items. We're preparing a report that we, that identifies the priority items, but it also develops a plan. You know, in that plan, it will it will have a, have a schedule. It will identify who will be working on it. It will identify a time frame. It will identify resources that has to go into it. So it's not a matter of something that we can just produce that they can produce just in a, in a week's time. Um, so. I, I want to be careful in, in what we ask the staff to do because we want to have a full plan that, that, that we can lay out to the council <laughs> as to what we, what we want IPL to do in the next one to three to five years, whatever it takes to, to guide IPL in the future. And, and a plan has to be more than just a listing of ideas. It has to be a full plan, as I identified in what I just said. Garland, since you and I weren't in the room at the same time, I would like to know what your ideas are. And I'd like to know what everyone else's ideas are. And it may sound silly, but I, I, I feed off of other people's information. And if we have the ability to all work together even though that we have to do it two people here and two people there, I would still like to know your thoughts mm -hmm. and see what I have forgotten that you have remembered. And maybe we can help the city staff come up with a much better plan by sharing those ideas. I see nothing wrong with preliminary, preliminary, preliminary before we come up with something final. But for us to uh, set on our hands for, for even a day or two bothers me. I mean, I'm available. I mean, I, it might be late at night, early in the morning, but I'm available. Now, I apologize for showing up late. I've got another thing working right now. I'm trying to get it handled before the October because the people I work with work <laughs> slow too. And I just know that we should not be putting this on the back burner. And the, the best way for us to do this as a team would be to put us all in the same room and let us hammer it out. But with the open meetings law, we're not allowed to. So the sooner you can get those ideas back to me, maybe not everybody else feels the same way. I would like to look at what everybody else is thinking so I can give you something better to work with than what I gave you with this morning. Yeah, I, I submitted my ideas to the full board. You know, last week, you know, I had about 15 different suggestions and, and nobody, and I guess Mark suggested that nobody else submitted their ideas. But I, I, I don't mind, you know, if you want to just list the ideas. I just want to be careful in saying, let's not expect a full plan in a week's time, because I think the plan is much more in. in I, I, I agree. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. But, 
the plan is also has the solutions in it, is what it has in it too, where I am. Well, the plan identifies how we're going to get to the solutions. Right, exactly. So, and Mark and Garland submitted them. I submitted mine in person at the meeting. Uh, if you want copies of Garland's and Mark's, they're on the computer. I know I printed his out and, and Garland's too. So I don't know if Bridget, did you have anything? I sent them and then I got in trouble for sunshine violation. So um, just need to know if, if there's going to be a forum that's public for discussion, I think, to follow on to your thought, which is some of this is easier to do in a round robin. Um, than if I have to send it to each person individually. So just the pleasure of the group of how we communicate that is fine. Um, but I, I want to second what Garland said, that deliberate, meaningful, thoughtful process is the key piece to this. We've already seen a lot of slapdash stuff that's gone um, in the past, and, and reactionary is not a good way to do strategic planning. So if that requires us to have another meeting, so be it, but uh, I think that, that the slow and thoughtful consideration is going to be the very best way to do this work. I'll be glad to schedule another meeting on the 5th or the 12th. If anybody would like to show up, and we'll throw all the plans out again. Would that, would that satisfy you, David? It would be helpful. I don't know whether I'm going to, I asked you to be satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, do we have a problem with that, Christine? I do know that um, November 5th, Steve Wagner has um, another meeting to attend, and he will not be able, he will not be available to live stream the meeting. Okay. So that would be the, that's the 5th? That's the 5th. We can meet on the 12th, and then we're going to meet again on the 19th. Is the 12th all right there with everybody? Can I see a show of hands? Can you set that up, Christine, for the 12th at 2.30 here? Uh, there, there's no sense in all the staff being here. It'll be an open meeting, but Jim and, and Adam are really the only ones who need to be here. What day is that again? The 12th of November. Yeah. I know you're going to Orlando, right? Huh? No. Oh. I'll be back. You're on stock in Orlando. Okay. All right, then that's taken care of. Uh, anything else? Uh, go ahead, Jim. I'm sorry. I just want to update you for our capital projects this year. The three biggest ones that we have, uh, one is the rebuild of substation K. That's uh, well underway. We've got some of the equipment has been delivered. Some of the equipment is still uh, being engineered by the by the manufacturers that we're dealing with. But that project is is well underway to upgrade the service that we have coming out of sub K, which is sub K is down there off of uh, 39th Street and, and Arrowhead. Um, the second one is the rebuilding the transmission line from sub E to sub F. That one is also well underway. Uh, our third big project uh, on our capital list this year was a capacitor bank that is to provide voltage support with the removal of our, it provides voltage support on our, our system with the, with the retirement of the Blue Battle plant. Uh, that one is still in the engineering phase, but uh, we don't expect any, any delays on that. Anything else? Any questions? Anybody? It's Adam, you want to go up on, uh, take a look at this upcoming agenda items. Uh, also, I'd like for our 19th meeting, I'd like to have a update on the, uh, the solar farms. Did you want something on that too, Garland? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where we're at on how much uh, we're getting or where we're at with them, I guess is what I want to say. So, if, if I may, Mr. Chair, part of the reason I, I've added this agenda item to our agenda is to start kind of forecasting 
discussions for our meetings uh, so we can kind of project things out a little bit. Okay, so right now, you know, it's up to the board here, but right now we, we have um, several items scheduled for November. Um, you know, if we do a special meeting on the 12th for the prioritization to talk about a, you know, preliminary draft, uh, and then have another meeting, have a follow-up meeting on the 19th, a week later on that, that probably takes a pretty good chunk of the meeting. In addition, um, we have an important presentation from our municipal advisors about our cash balance policy. Um, so they will be coming in from out of town for that. Um, my guess is that that would, um, we're, that would involve a pretty hefty discussion from this board as well, good, some good questions and, and dialogue there. Um, so if we add the solar farm discussion that and some of those other items, it's gonna it's gonna be a you know pretty robust meeting. So maybe looking at moving that one out to the December meeting and maybe some of these other items out to a December meeting might be um, beneficial and then also ensure we have some good meaningful uh, agenda items at every meeting. That's fine with me on the solar farm. Right. That's fine with me. That's, yeah, you moved the solar farm out there. Also, uh, Adam, I, uh, the sunshine law, is that is that a necessary or could we push it out? We, we could push that out potentially as long as, as long as Sarah's available. Sarah, are you available later on? <laughs> Always. Okay. You yeah. see how you are. I'm always available for you guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> That's our girl. All right. So part know, part of the goal to... here too is you know we we've um, seems like we we kind of rush putting the agenda together um, at the end trying to get our topics. So hopefully this. Uh, gives us an opportunity to really put some good thought into what we're providing you in advance and the information you need from us before the meeting. So thank you. I appreciate I appreciate this on the upcoming agenda items, and also you might we might think about it. I don't know it might happen if we have the meeting on the twelfth. There's a good possibility we hash everything out and have a vote. On the twelfth, there's a very good possibility of that. Mm -hmm. So then we could take that off the nineteenth of the So let's play it by ear there. All right, I like the optimism. I do too. <laughs> I think we. I, I really do. I, I don't know about the rest of the board, but I feel we're going in the right direction all of a sudden. And we're not taking two steps forward, one step back. We're we're going forward. Yeah. For what it's worth, and I know it's not on the agenda under here, but. Um, you know, going through this process with, with each of you this week, um, I think Jim, I don't want to speak for Jim, but I think we both appreciate an opportunity to have a, a less informal, you know, more informal conversation with you all. So you get to know us a little bit and uh, we get to know you uh, to try to develop a, a good working relationship. So we, we appreciated the opportunity. We really did. I know you all are busy. I, I, so. I'm not busy. I enjoyed heck out. I would have was great. The chairman, uh, just for a future item, um, and I don't know that it has to be in the December, but uh, uh, Dan, I know that you were interested in. You've mentioned in the past that you've been looking at using your staff to uh, um, reconstruct some of the the main lines, and, and instead of contracting them out, and and it looks like we may have some funding to do that. Wondering if maybe in the future you might do a presentation of what you think are the opportunities of doing that. Absolutely, I, you'll see on a we have an agenda item Monday night where we're replacing the water line on Walnut Street, almost a million dollars. So we're starting down that path, and we'll, that's a great idea. We'll do that. Thank you, Dan. All right, time's huh? ready. May I ask? Are there? Do you have a summary of how you? Uh, perceive sunshine so that I can make sure that I am compliant of in course. future communications. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Uh, for any comments, um, 
I do have a couple of things I'd like to add before going to the comments. Uh, one, um, I think it's it's very it's incumbent on all of us on the PUAB. I know I personally appreciate um, the work and the effort that our uh, city council has done. Uh, just most recently, to acknowledge the the role of the PUAB, it's something that um, I think we've been sadly uh, missing for quite some time. And um, I don't know if it took courage or whatever, but I truly appreciate um, the comments that. Uh, we're going to be utilized to uh, help direct and help to advise what uh, what we think makes common sense, and and sometimes it, it's been uh, it hasn't been accepted well on the uh, city council, and I've been the first to admit that it's it's been hard hard to listen to sometimes, but I just want the city council to know that I truly appreciate um, this opportunity. That's why this prioritization thing is so very important to me, and it's evident from the comments from other members of the PAB, to try and get them a good product that um, uh, that will help the city council, not trying to direct the city council, but to help them give them a different point of view on um, what the rate payers, we represent the rate payers, we don't represent the city, we represent the rate payers for um, the three enterprises that we do. So I just want to say thank you for that. Uh, next, I'd like to make a motion. And it's very similar to a motion I made back in, I don't know, March or something about relief for our um, ratepayers. Mr. Huff has been instrumental in helping throughout this period with the ratepayers. He, he drove it for the, and Mr. Huff's in the, the room, so don't get your uh, ego too big on it. But he helped drive um, the rate reduction, the 6% rate reduction. It may not be a whole lot of money, but it's the right um, face to give to the rate payers that we do care, that the city cares, and we understand what they're going through. And I think um, this is a great opportunity. And I, I know that the discussion has been uh, pretty strong when it comes to the city council and what they do. I, and I don't know what they've got planned, but I, I would hope that uh, I could get the support of my group here. I'll hand out what I have before I read it to the leadership. Give him one. Did you make sure that Ms. McCann wants to get to one over there? Okay. And then we need to make sure that Bridget. The motion I'm making is um, very similar, like I said, to the one that oh, I ignored you on purpose. There you go, bud. Um, per the um, it's motion to provide economic relief to our utility ratepayers. Uh, per Independence, Missouri, City Charter, Section 3.16, Item 9, we recommend to the executive or legislative official of the city, our city council, programs for financing, use, use ownership, service, operation, or franchising of public, uh, public utilizes operating within the city, including but not limited to the recommendations regarding rate adjustments. We, the public advisory, public utility advisory board, recommend a financial uh, relief program to the city, to the independent utility ratepayers. Amount and method to be determined by the city staff and city council. This recommend, this recommends all of our utilities participate, WPC, IPL, and also our water departments. Given the economic crisis for many of our ratepayers due to the uh, current COVID-19 pandemics, it is cr critical that the financial benefit of our is benefit is recognized as soon as possible. I second that motion. Okay. <laughs> I thought maybe he wrote it. I didn't know. <laughs> Pretty no, damn quick. It's very Thank you, motion on the floor. Has been seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Your Honor. I'm not opposed to this, but I think that we passed the motion. Turn your mic I'm sorry. I think we passed the motion at the previous meeting that any motion that came to the PUAB 
would be forward to the PUB in, prior to the meeting so we have an opportunity to review it before it was presented to the PUB. So I think that this is actually out of order. I would move that this be tabled to or until uh, uh, another meeting. I don't, Any other further discussion? Go ahead. I don't know. I don't know how else you can make it any clearer. It's very, very clear, and very succinct, and right to the point. Well, it's not an issue of the content. It's an issue that we're not following our own procedures. We passed the motion that any motion that was brought to the POB would be would be submitted to the POB prior to the meeting. This was not presented to us prior to the meeting. I have a question. How old is that? I don't remember that. And I've been here since March. Excuse me? Uh, when did when was this passed where you couldn't bring something up in front of the board yeah, or make a motion? Go back to our minutes. It was about uh, oh, six months or so ago. It was passed. Can you guys hear me? It, we did amend our rules of procedure. It was probably, oh, there I am. We amended the rules of procedure. It was probably March, April, maybe a little bit before that, February, because um, I wrote it. Um, and we passed, so it's under Article 3, Paragraph 2, that any item that wants to be placed on the agenda must be done 24 hours in advance. And then if you want to amend the agenda to allow for an item, like Mr. McDonald's, motion here, you would have to take a vote to amend the agenda, then vote on that. If it was yes, then we could inter entertain Mr. McDonald's motion. Uh, sir, I, yes. I have a question. Yes. You said on the agenda. Right. This, so, is, this is simply a motion. This is not an agenda item that we would put on the agenda. It, it would be. It you would put be? something like this on the agenda to discuss if the okay. board wants it. Because there is discussion. You might have presentation. You might have a public comment to say yay or nay to Mr. McDonald's motion. I would consider an agenda item. But if you want to take this up today, the proper procedure would be, would be to uh, I'd make ask a motion, for a motion to, amend. to amend the. Yep. I'd like to make a motion to suspend that rule for today's meeting. I second it. All right, so the how do we first do motion that? is on standby. The uh, second motion has been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion on that? I call for a vote. Roll call, please. Mary Porter? Yes. Garvin Land? No. Joe Zach? Yes. Mark McDonald? Yes. David McDowell? Yes. Bridget McCandless? No. Motion, motion passes. Motion passed. So now you can consider Mr. McDonald's motion. We've had discussion on Mr. McDonald's motion and have to call for a vote. Can, can we wait? There's can discussion. discussion. Oh, I'm sorry, Bridget. Okay. Go ahead. Um, in, con in concert with you know, Garland's concern about this being um, kind of last item at the, the uh, meeting. When we do rate changes, I want to be sure that we do it with good data behind us, like how much, why, what's the fiscal impact I, to the sorry, city. I'm sorry, I can't understand what you're saying. There you go. What are the impacts to the city budget or, or to the utility budget? Why do we choose a particular amount? How is it applied? When is it applied? When does it sunset? I just feel like there's a lot of questions that you want to be sure you answer um, when you do a rate reduction. So is it a temporary rate reduction? Is it a permanent rate reduction? And how does that get rolled out? So I just feel like there's a lot of details that aren't in the motion. Well, first of all, I, I'd like to respond. Is that okay? Mark. Okay. Uh, first of all, the and this has been an issue that's been ongoing for a long time. City budget has no impact. I'm sorry. I'm zero I'm impact budget. on enterprise funds. That's what we should know. You can look at the uh, the financials that we received today, just to see how many dollars are sitting there in regards to unrestricted reserves. That. Those are facts. 
what this motion is to do is for to to bring them uh, bring up what Mr. Huff brought up back uh, March back in March that we need to look at a way to give relief to the ratepayers the ratepayers that pay our bills people that live in our city not people that live outside our city but people that pay the bills for this utility and give them a relief just like multiple organizations have done that's all this is the the idea of it going towards the city's budget it's got to be, we, we've got to work hard in the future, too, to separate the two. So, uh, did I take that in consideration? Uh, yes. Maybe I can help. We're, we're not talking about a rate reduction. Not at all. No. We're, not we're talking all. about a one-time, is that right? A one month? It's not clear what we're talking about. It That's could be a rate, whatever the city council decides. Whatever council decides. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this, this, this doesn't. This does not, it doesn't, we're not sure what we're voting on. I'm voting on this. But, but what are we voting, what are you saying we're voting can, on? Can I, can we're I make voting on, on the city council doing this? Doing yeah, Mr. Uh -huh. Chairman, yes. the, the, um, the amount and the method is to be determined by the city staff and the city council. We're just making a recommendation to them to make a move to help the ratepayers of our city. That's all we're doing. Amen. We're not setting how much. We're not. We're not allowed to do that. Right. So all we're doing is making a recommendation to the city council, help the citizens of our town and help them now. Thank you, Mr. McDowell. That Thank was you. much better said than I did. Thank yes. you. Could Could you correct? Could you correct the the word structure? I mean, it's not even for the. It's not even worded properly. The sentence structure isn't worded properly. It might not be worded properly, but I think the intent is there. And all we're doing is giving a recommendation to City Council. So to submit something to the City Council where the sentence doesn't even make sense. Any further discussion? Call for a vote. Can, can we at least clarify what the sentence says? This recommend all of our utilities participate? Is it this recommendation that all of our utilities participate? I just, I don't understand what your, your sentence there says. I think you just had a typo. Did you hear that, Mark? It looks like a typo to me. Yeah, it is. It's just a typo. I just thought it up today. Can I fix it? Can you fix it? Do you want the letter S added to recommends? Sure. <laughs> Is that all right with you, Bridget? Yes, sir. Thank you. Call for a vote now, Christine. Mayor Porter? Yes. Garland Land? Abstain. Dozak? Yes. Mark Donald? Uh, yes. David McDowell? Yes. Bridget McCandless? I'm going to vote abstain as well. Thank you. Two abstains. Motion passed. Time for any comments from the board members at this time. Hearing none, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Nail, whenever you all have time to get that list together, I mean, as soon as you can get it emailed out, it would be great. And I would like to meet with you guys probably 24 to 48 hours. We don't have to have uh, city staff. Mm -hmm. uh, Adam, you don't have to be there. I mean, I think we can get a lot of it just hammered out. And Adam, you're welcome to be there. I don't mean to throw you out of the room. It's important that I'm there. Okay. I have a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. We're adjourned.
Bridget, what changed? Oh, one, one, 